Hi folks, my name is Matthew Harrison. I'm a scientist at the Tasmanian Institute of Agriculture. Uh, and in this webinar, we'll be looking at climate change uh, and the climate controller in APSIM. So how to modify your, your existing rainfall, temperature, radiation, wind speed, to do whatever you like. In other words, to create climate change examples in APSIM. So what I've got open here is the is the example from the uh, default AppSim example. So if you go to Home, you go to Open an Example, uh, you go to your Program Files, AppSim Directory, Examples, Tutorials, double click on Climate Controller, and then save it to your own directory. AppSim won't run from the Examples file, which is what I've done. Uh, and then it'll pop up. So there's all your home screen with the existing simulations. It'll pop up with the Climate Controller example. I encourage you to read these notes. So what's been created here is a number of different examples in each folder. So we'll only look at two of these today, uh, and the practical test actually applies the different climates to the to the actual cropping scenario. But these these two folders here just look at the effect of climate change per se, which I think is quite informative. So I encourage you to have a look at that. Uh, so if we just go in here and you actually click on the start, it's it's showing you what the climate controller can do. So it can, what it can do is it can turn off and on the climate control from a specific date. It can do it within a year, or it can do it within a year win yearly window. So what's been done here is a factorial simulation setup. So that this funny looking symbol here, and if you click the open uh, icon, it's got factors at the top. It's got the simulation, which is called climate control, and then it's got the plots. So if we have a look at the factors, underneath the factors you have to set it up in this way. So we have the different climate scenarios. So what we have is completely off, which is just one line of script. So this first line, these square brackets, is actually referring to the climate controller component. So that's a component within the simulation, which is this one here. So it's referring to that name. So we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. But those square brackets are very important. So don't change those, and that's actually referring to a specific name. Then it's referring to script uh, and allowing control false. So it's saying, well, we just run, want to run a default simulation with no effect of climate controller. Fine. This second one, if you look at the change, it's saying, yes, we have the climate controller. We're allowing control true. Uh, from date, we allow the control, controller to enact. So it's saying enable date from the 1st of the first 1980. Do we want within year control? No, we don't. Uh, and so on and so forth. This one's enabling from the 5th of January. This one's enabling from the 15th of January. Now this one's saying we can um, do within year control. So do we want to manipulate the actual historical climate within the year? Yes, we do. So you have to turn the climate controller on. The date from when? Uh, within year, yes, we do want within year. When do we start? When do we finish? Uh, and this is actually enabling within year, within a specified time. So just to give you an example how that works, if you copy and go down here and create a new line, just hit OK. If I just go back here and hit full stop, it's uh, it's actually called IntelliSense, I think. And what should happen is that uh, actually after I've punched in in a normal scenario. Uh, is this IntelliSense thing will come up with the variables that you can use. It won't do it here because we're not actually in the in the output file. So when you get to the variables in the output file, when you hit full stop, a bunch of different variables will come up. So we'll just get rid of that. Now we'll go down here. This is the actual simulation. So we'll close that up again. That's the factors to be done. And you could do it with just one factor. So we'll close that up. Now this is the clock. It's saying when to start to run your simulation from the 1st of January 1980 to the 30th of the 1st 1981. This is your weather file. This is, gives you a, a summary of the historical file. So this is typical for any AppSim simulation. This is showing you where it's actually coming from. So it's coming from the examples. This is the Lincoln.met file. Here it's got rain, max temp and min temp, radiation, wind, vapor pressure. Uh, and it's showing the, the associated charts. This climate control is very important, and very specific to your simulation, so I encourage you to look at this very carefully. Don't worry about the script, worry about the parameters here. So it's saying, should we enable this script? Yes, we should. 
uh, start the climate controls beginning on the 15th of January 1980. Implement climate control during only part of the year? No. Within the year, the first day that it starts, the end day that it finishes. Now this is the main part, so rainfall, radiation, min temp, max temp, vapour pressure. Do you want to apply a multiplier? So a multiplier means if my rainfall on any given, if my rainfall for example is 10, 10 millimetres on a day, do you want to change to apply a constant multiplier to every single day? So if your rainfall was 10, you applied a multiplier of 10%, your new rainfall would be 11 millimetres, so it's 10% of 10. If your multiplier was 100%, it would be 100 millimetres. So it's just applying a constant multiplier for every single day. This one is doing an addition for every single day. So if your rainfall on any given day was 10, your new rainfall will be 15 millimetres. And so in that way, they're actually applied. So that will give you warmer or drier climates, but note that climate change scenarios don't necessarily happen in such a simplistic way but it's useful to think about what might happen if the climate warms or dries or goes in the opposite direction. The other thing is that vapour pressure is connected to temperature so I encourage you to think about how vapour pressure might be connected to changes in temperature so uh, changes in reality in climate change don't necessarily happen in isolation but it's useful for conducting a sensitivity analysis for how each of these m variables might change. So the, uh, the, the, va the way vapour pressure is connected to temperature is through something called Teton's formula, but uh, that's a webinar for another day. You have the summary of the output there. Uh, that's just typical for any simulation, soil arbitrator. Then you have your field details. So in the field we have microclimate. These are usually typical constants. I'd probably encourage you not to change them. Irrigation, fertiliser. Soil organic matter, probably don't change any of those unless you have to. These are, so fertiliser is fixed. Then you have your soil details. There are components that reference to this name, so once you've set the name, try not to change it again. Uh, the soil details we don't need to go into here, so you can just paste them in from anywhere else. But it's important that you think about your soil details. Then you have your results. Now, as before, th this component here is referring to a specific component in the tree, so that's referring to clock. This one is referring to the weather, and then it's getting the rain variable from the weather. And these ones are coming from the climate controller. This is the, probably the important bit. So it's saying, do the control for climate controller, and this is a con climate control interval. And the reporting frequency for the clock is daily because it's going to come out end of day. Then we have your plots. So in there we have a bunch of different plots, rainfall, radiation, max temp, min temp, vapour pressure. You can click on them individually and it will bring it up, but I find it more useful to click on the plot level and it brings them all up. So if you click on rainfall, it will just do rainfall. If you click on radiation, it will just do radiation. I find it useful if you, if you actually look at them all. If you click in there, it will zoom in and out. If you click out here, you can, you can actually uh, scroll up and down. So what, what it's actually showing, uh, so for this one, th this brown line is the, is the default rainfall. Uh, and the green line is saying from the 15th of January, we want a constant rainfall. So we want rainfall on every single day to be 15 millimetres. So you can see that on the 15th of January, it's gone up and it's getting 15 millimetres every single day. Uh, the completely off is the black line, so you can see that the black line there, the brown line mirrors the black line except for this period here. So the brown line is saying we want to manipulate rainfall within this period. So if you think down here, we've said from the 5th of January to the 30th of January, we want uh, rainfall to be constant 15 millimetres. So it's, it's mirrored the historical up to this point, then it's been 15 millimetres, then it's gone down again. And the changes are applied for the other variables in the same way. You can see here that the change is rather obvious. 45 for radiation is perhaps extreme, but you can see the change. So you can see this is the default variable, which is fluctuating, which is quite normal. You get cloud cover, you get a sunny day, uh, and this is the, the climate change scenario. So if you click on, uh, click on this top level, you can see the, all of the changes applied within them. So that's, that's with additions. 
uh, additions to each each variable so if we go back here if to the climate controller if I can find where it is here it's actually applied no multipliers it's just applied additions to them so 15 45 to radiation 35 to minimum temperature if we go to this second example so turn that one off put this open the, up this one it's applied in the same way so it's set up with various factors I won't talk about that too much if we go over here it, what it's done in the climate controller is we've applied multiplications so it's actually applied in a different way so if you actually have a look at the plots what it's done is uh, and you can sort of get an impression of what it's trying to do from the from the legend if we just click on rainfall so the black line is the historical rainfall you can see it going up and down the green line is multiply by half and add zero so what it's done for every any given rainfall it's just halved it so this for example let's say it was 110 it's come up with 55 and so if this one here was 18 this one here is the new one is 9 so it's essentially half the rainfall uh, and this one here has created a different exam uh, example where it's actually added 20 millimetres for every every given day. So you can see by multiply by zero, add 20, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, this is a, a vapour pressure example. You can see by that they've been multiplied by half. If we go into the script, where the script is, so this is the actual climate controller itself. Uh, they're the field details which are typical for any given simulation these are the 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 outputs that are going to come out so this is saying do you control for your climate controller the, the outputs are going to come out on any given uh, every single day at the end of the day uh, and there's your plots so we'll close that one up and this one here is actually a, a test of applying it to wheat I won't get I won't go too much into the details but what it's actually showing is that it's going through it, it's applying the climate controller, it's doubling the rainfall in the, in the example, and then it's doing a default simulation with normal rainfall, and then it's doing a, another default simulation with double rainfall. And you can see the comparison is stark. So you can see the double rainfall is having a big effect, but the effect of double rainfall varies across time. So a lot of these components are typical as, a, as in other examples to typical AppSim simulations, but the, the big thing to manipulate there is the climate controller, uh, wherever it is. I can't see it in that one there. It is there somewhere. Uh, if you go back here and open up this one here, you can see the climate controller, uh, and that's actually applied to a practical test in that way. So that's it, and thanks very much for watching.